JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for August the 28th. I am Harla Bospisuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against the majority of the other G10 currencies on Thursday and during the Asian morning Friday. It gained only against the Japanese yen, while it, fo it was found virtually unchanged against uh, NOC. The greenback lost the most ground I guess, against uh, the Aussie and the Kiwi. The weakening of the US dollar and the yen combined with the strengthening of the risk-linked currencies Aussie and Kiwi suggests that markets traded in a risk-on fashion once again. Although major EU indices closed their Thursday session in negative waters, in the US, both the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 0.17 and 0.57% respectively, with the former hitting a fresh record. The exception was Nasdaq, which slid 0.34%. The positive investor morale rolled over into the Asian session today as well. Although Japan's Nikkei fell 1.40% due to Abe's resignation reports, we will discuss this uh, in a while, China's Shanghai Composite, Hong Kong's Hang Seng and South Korea's KOSPI are all up 1.52, 1.97 and 0.48% respectively. The risk averse uh, trading during the EU session shows that market participants remained cautious ahead of Fed Chief Powell's speech at the Jackson Hole Economic Symposium. However, in the aftermath of the event, they felt comfortable to re-increase their risk exposure. Powell said that the Fed will now target a 2% average inflation and put emphasis on broad and inclusive employment with a shift motivated by underlying changes to the economy, including lower potential growth, persistently lower interest rates and low inflation. Following periods when inflation has been running persistently below 2%, appropriate monetary policy will likely aim to achieve inflation mod moderately above 2% for some time, the Fed chief noted. Although he added that the committee is not uh, tying itself to any particular method to define, average, uh, to define average inflation, this means that the Fed is willing to tolerate above 2% uh, inflation for a while before raising interest rates, which implies extra, loot, uh, extra loose monetary policy for longer. In our view, this uh, confirms the Fed's willingness to do whatever it takes to support an economy hit by the fast spreading of the coronavirus pandemic, despite Powell not commenting on whether or not additional stimulus could be introduced soon. We believe that the Fed's commitment to keep interest rates uh, low for longer is likely to keep equity markets supported and allow investors to divert to more flows away from safe, haven, from safe haven assets like the US dollar and the Japanese yen. However, we also believe that a lot will uh, depend on whether Fed officials will hint uh, extra action ahead of the September meeting. Anything suggesting that they could do so in the months to come could fuel further the broader risk, the broader risk, uh, risk appetite, which, while, a correction, while a decent correction may be possible in case they signal that they are done uh, for now, something that we see as the least likely scenario. Remember that last week, in the minutes of the latest FOMC meeting, it was revealed that additional accommodation could be required. Thus, as long as data point to an economy struggling to recover, we expect policymakers to stay ready to do more if, if uh, deemed necessary. 
Now, apart uh, from headlines and developments surrounding the broader investor morale, cut traders are also likely to place emphasis on Canada's GDP data for June and the second quarter as a whole. The monthly rate for June is uh, forecast to have increased further to 5.3% from 4.5% after tumbling to minus 11.7% in April. That said, no forecast is available for the quarter-over-quarter -quarter annualized rate. At its uh, last meeting, the Bank of Canada decided to keep interest rates unchanged at 0.25% and noted that they will stay there until the 2% inflation target is sustainably achieved. Officials also added that they will continue with their QE program until the economic recovery is well underway and that they stand ready to adjust their programs if market conditions change. With all that in mind, we believe that further improvement in economic activity during the month of June may allow policymakers to stand pat for a while more. On top of that, with oil prices staying in an uptrend mode and the broader market sentiment staying supported, the loony may stay relatively strong for more. If risk appetite continues to improve, we would expect uh, the currency to perform better against uh, the safe havens like uh, the US dollar, the Japanese yen, and maybe the Swiss franc. Now, today, during the early European morning, headlines hit the wires uh, that Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is set to resign due to health reasons. He wants to avoid disruptions to the government due to his illness, the reports uh, suggested. Abe has pledged to revive growth with his Abenomics, policies that included extra loose monetary easing, as well as fiscal spending and reforms. As a result, the immediate market reaction on the reports was a stronger year, a stronger again, and a tumble in Nikkei. That said, with monetary and fiscal policies worldwide staying ultra loose, we doubt that Abe's resignation could result in a long-lasting uptrend, uptrend in the yen and a more severe slide in, uh, in the Nikkei. If investors around the globe continue to trade in a risk on manner, the safe haven yen is likely to come back under renewed selling interest and Japanese equities are likely to rebound. As for the rest of uh, today's events, uh, during the US session, we get personal income and spending data for uh, July alongside the core PCE index for the month. Personal income is expected to have declined 0.2% month over month after falling 1.1% in June, while spending is forecast to have slowed to 1.5% month over month from 5.6%. The core PCE index, the Fed's favorite inflation metric, is expected to have increased to 1.2% year-over-year from 0.9%, something supported by the rise in the core CPI rate for the month. The final University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for August is also, is also coming out and is expected to be revised fractionally up to 72.8 from 72.5. We also have one speaker on today's agenda and this is Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week uh, much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.